Hi all, welcome to Learn IT. Today we are going to talk about AWS Access Service. We will look into AWS X-Ray core concepts and then we will look into AWS X-Ray integration with serverless applications written in Java like Lambda functions written in Java. And at last we will look into AWS X-Ray service graphs and traces for some of the HTTP requests that we make for our AWS serverless applications. So what is AWS X-Ray? AWS X-Ray is a service which collects data from requests served by our distributed applications. A distributed application in the cloud has many components like API Gateway, Load Balancer, DynamoDB, Lambda Function, SQS, ACS for email or notifications, SNS. So these are all independent components and AWS X-Ray service collects data from all of these components and this information of all the components helps developers to debug, analyze and check computation time of each component in the application. AWS Access Service provides a service map or graph which is a visualization of all the application components. So in the graph, every component is considered as a node and we get a service map with respect to the request served by our application. So for every request, we can get a service map using which we can easily identify, we can easily debug, analyze or check computation time of each component. Now let's talk about some of the core concepts of AWS X-Ray service. So guys, this is one of the service graph I have captured for one of my serverless application. And you can see here, it has all the components which I am using for my serverless application like AWS API Gateway, AWS Lambda Functions, AWS DynamoDB, and also any external web server, any external web API we are hitting from our Lambda Functions. Now coming to segments, Segments are the individual components that we have in our application architectures. So you can see here API gateway is one segment the lambda function is one segment and also DynamoDB is one segment and a rest server which we are consuming is also one segment. Now this segments if you see here this rest API we are consuming from one of our segment which is a lambda function this DynamoDB is also getting access from one of the segment. So these are also sub segments to one of the segment and individually these are segments to our complete service graph. Now coming to traces, traces are end to end record for the HTTP requests which are getting served by your application. We have two traces in this service graph. One is shown in red color and one is shown in blue color. So if you follow blue color trace, from API Gateway, we are calling one of the Lambda function and from that Lambda function, we are invoking one more Lambda function as well as we are also invoking one REST API. If we follow red color dress, we are invoking one Lambda function and after that, we are in consuming one REST API as well as we are accessing DynamoDB. For Lambda functions, you can see a single Lambda function has two nodes. This is because for Lambda functions, we are getting one node for initialization of lambda function and one node for execution of lambda function. In order to create traces for your HTTP request, AWS Access Service adds a unique header which is X Amazon Trace ID in your request so that it can trace the complete track of your HTTP request. And this header, it will be created on the very first service your HTTP request interact which is enabled or supported for X-Ray. In our case, it is Amazon API Gateway. Now let's go to Visual Studio Code and have a look on sample application to integrate AWS X-Ray with a serverless application written in Java. So guys, you can see I have created one sample application for Java based Lambda functions using open source serverless framework. If you are new to serverless framework, you can watch my previous videos on setting up serverless framework and creating lambda functions and API gateway. The first change we have to do is we have to enable tracing for AWS lambda and API gateway. So you can see I have enabled the tracing for lambda and API gateway services. And the second change you have to do is in your lambda functions execution role. You have to add permissions for AWS X-Ray in your lambda functions execution role so that the X-Ray agent or X-Ray daemon thread running on your lambda functions can send x-ray traces to aws x-ray service 
Once you are done with these two changes in your serverless YAML file, you can go to your pom.xml file. And here you will have to add dependencies for AWS X-Ray SDK. Now let's go through the dependencies one by one. So guys, if you are using Apache HTTP client to communicate with external web services, you can use AWS X-Ray Recorder SDK for Apache HTTP and this will provide you one proxy client builder which will help you to trace outgoing HTTP calls. The next dependency I have added here is AWS X-Ray SDK Core which will help us to create segments and record segments traces for our HTTP requests. This is the core for AWS X-Ray. We must have to add this dependency. The next dependency we have here is AWS X-Ray Recorder for AWS SDKs. And this dependency will help us to trace all the service calls which we are making from our application. Like if we are invoking another lambda function from our lambda function, it will help us to trace that. Likewise for other services like S3, DynamoDB, RDS. Next dependency we have here is AWS X-Ray Recorder SDK Instrumenter. And this dependency will help us to automatically record all the service calls which we are doing from our application. So we don't have to do any manual code changes to trace any service calls we are doing. Next dependency I have here is for AWS Java SDK Lambda and this will help us to invoke other Lambda functions from our Lambda functions. And at last I have an SDK for DynamoDB to access DynamoDB APIs. Now let's have a look at Lambda functions code. So the first Lambda function we have is get user Lambda function and we have mapped get user handler method for our get user lambda function and inside this handler you can see i have one http call method and from here i am calling one public rest api and here you can see while creating the builder i am using the http client builder from our x-ray recorder sdk of http version so we are not using normal apache http client builder we are using a proxy of Apache HTTP client builder from our X-Ray SDK which we have added as a dependency. So you can see the respective dependency we have as AWS X-Ray Recorder SDK Apache HTTP. Once we are creating a client using this HTTP client builder, we will be able to trace outgoing HTTP calls. So whatever HTTP calls we are making now, this will be traced and will be available in our service map at AWS console of AWS X-Ray. You can see right after this HTTP call method, I am also creating one DynamoDB client object and I am calling get item from AWS DynamoDB table which is players table. So I am querying AWS DynamoDB table for one of the item. You can see to make this DynamoDB call, we just have created a normal DynamoDB client. We didn't do anything special to integrate this with AWS X-Ray. This is because we have added a complete instrumenter SDK here, which will take care of automatic tracing of all the AWS service calls. So we don't have to do anything. If we don't have this SDK in our build, then we will have to make a tracing handler with our DynamoDB client. So we will have to follow this syntax to add a tracing handler while creating our clients for other AWS services. Similar to get user lambda function, I have test AWS XL lambda function and in this lambda function as well, I have added one HTTP call to the external REST API and right after this HTTP call, I have also added one more method which is invoking lambda function. So you can see I have added a logic to invoke our get user lambda function from our test AWS Excel lambda function just to check lambda to lambda invoke in our service map. So these are the two lambda functions we have in our serverless YAML file defined currently and we have added a resource API gateway routes for both of these lambda functions. One is slash user and one is slash test. Now let's build this application using Maven. 
and once it gets built we can deploy using serverless commands so you can see it has built successfully now let's package it using sls package command and once the packaging is done we can use sls deploy command and you can see i am applying sls deploy which is serverless deploy command you can see it has uploaded cloud formation file which has generated using this serverless application and using that cloud formation file it is deploying our service now let's go to aws console and check aws x-ray so i'm just going to aws x-ray service and you can see for the last 5 minutes currently there is no data and also for traces there is nothing for the last 5 minutes now let's go to postman and hit our services so i am first triggering get user api and after get user api i will hit test aws x api so let's hit get user api now so this is the first time we are hitting after the deployment and it is a lambda cold start that's why it has taken 8 seconds and after get user i am calling x-ray test api and inside x-ray test api we are invoking get user lambda function as well so it will take definitely some time so we have got success response for both of the apis now let's go to aws x-ray console again and just refresh the stresses so you can see under last five minutes now we are getting two traces which we have just called two apis in our application for both of those requests it has recorded the traces and now we can click on the trace to get the trace map or service map so you can see here this is the trace for get user api call and inside this trace we can see the trace has begun from api gateway this is the api gateway segment and after api gateway segment we have get user lambda function initialization segment and once initialization is done it will invoke our lambda function get user details and inside get user details we have sub segments for rest api external rest api which we are invoking and we have a sub segment for dynamo db as well so these two are sub segments for our get user details lambda function also these are segments for our complete service map similarly for another api call it has created another trace now let's have a look on this trace you can see it is computing the map and inside this trace we can see a call has begun from our lambda uh, api gateway and it is invoking the lambda function as a sub segment this lambda function is test aws x-ray function and inside this test aws x-ray function we are first calling http call and then we are calling one more lambda function that is our get user details lambda function so you can see lambda function is sub segment lambda invoke call is sub segment of this test aws x-ray function also it is a individual segment in our complete service map you can see here for every segment or sub segment we are getting some status codes and using these status codes we can easily identify where our application request has been failed so here you can see for one of the external calls we are getting 404 this means something is wrong with this url you can also see there is one more segment which is make http call function which is not available in another api call this is because i have added one custom sub segment in one of the lambda function now let's go to this function code and check how to add custom sub segment so i have added a custom sub segment in the http call of test x-ray lambda function and you can see here to create a sub segment you can use aws x-ray begin sub segment method and once you get the sub segment you can add some additional information if you want to add like key value pair so you can add an annotation or you can add a metadata in this 
sub segment so using this information you can identify or filter your traces using the annotation keys and also you can keep some important metadata regarding your sub segments and at last in the finally block you will have to close your sub segments now let's go to service map let's refresh it you can see it is computing the complete service map for the last request it has not got all the data so let's wait and now you can see we have got some of the maps let's refresh it again okay so in this refresh we have got our complete service map and here you can see from aws api gateway we are seeing two requests two traces one for test aws x-ray function and one for get user details function and this test aws x-ray function is again after initialization in in the execution phase it is calling get user details function and it is calling one of the rest api from get user details function we are invoking dynamodb as well as rest api and here in rest api you are seeing on some of the part in orange color which is because of the 404 error which we have seen in the traces so we can see that in the traces again so guys today we learned about aws access service its core concepts and its integration with serverless applications written in java in the upcoming videos we will look into aws code commit code build code deploy and code pipeline services Thank you for watching this video. Please join me in the next videos.